Yeah, all right, guys. Well, here we are. And what's crazy is I did a monologue maybe like two hours ago. I'm like, all right, all right. I'm like breaking pottery over my head, getting all psyched out to do a video. And I just, I just got a really bad headache. I was like, no. And for the last like two hours, I've just been dancing in front of the mirror. The disco. Karina caught me. She's like, do you fuck dudes? I'm like, no, babe. I'm just letting loose a little bit. But anyway. Uh, oh, that neck. So tomorrow is hellacious for me. I got a surprise for you guys. I got a surprise guest that I'm interviewing tomorrow night. Uh, and I, you guys are going to be very happy about that. Uh, I'm going to be on the Dopey podcast. People have been asking me to do that one for a long time. Um, and Dave, the guy that, the, the host of it, super cool. Been kind of bonding with him, sending butthole shots. I'm like, what's up, Dave? You like this? And he, like, blocks me. Hello? Dave? We were supposed to record at noon. What's up, bro? I don't know. So I'm doing that. I gotta wait. This is what I gotta do tomorrow. I, oh my god, dude. Fuck. I gotta wake up. <laughs> well, that's that's man though. Wake up and then I got the dopey podcast at noon. And then I have to go get a haircut. And then I have to go get my car washed. And then I need to go get my butthole bleached. Get my butthole bleached. I don't know. Anything could happen. <laughs> Anything can happen on podcasts. And then I, at 3.30, I have to go to the bank because, dude, okay, I don't even have a bank account, right? But Karina does. So anytime that we need to spend money on shit, I PayPal transfer it into her bank account so we can pay bills. So, like, I know, like, okay, Netflix is coming up. This, you know, we get, like, stars, Netflix, all that shit, Spotify, things that, like, come out monthly. So I put a certain amount of money in there. I mean, but no, she can't do it. If I put the money in that account, she would siphon it. She buys shit that, like, she doesn't need. She's like, look, it's a gold-plated hula hoop. I got on eBay. I was like, how much? 2K? I'm like, babe, it's a fucking phenomenal purchase. I'm not even mad. That's cool. This is amazing. Let's hula hoop. Fuck yeah. No, she spends insane amounts of money. So, I mean, I'm good to her. I give her an allowance and everything, but I just can't. She can't have access. So, anyway, point is, and I pay for, like, my parents have, you know that thing that, like, old people get? It's like a little uh, it's life alert. Like, help, I've fallen. You know that really, like, low-budget commercial? You're like, dude. Your fucking commercial looks like it's from the early 90s. And you want me to, you seriously want me to fucking trust you with my mom's fragile ass life? How much? 80 bucks? You guys got Venmo? No, those guys, every fucking month, I give them, I have to give them the debit card. I'm like, dude, the debit card has not changed. Every fucking month. They call my mom too. They like sweater. Like, ma'am, we have your son tied up in the back of a Cadillac right now. I need you to pay your life alert. My mom's like, oh my God, my son's such a drug addict. Fuck him. And then she, no, but they really do call her and they like harass her and shit. It really pisses me off. And it's not like I can't pay. I'm like, dude, fuck. Just, they, it's. They have a prop. Life alert has a prop. It doesn't fucking shock me. I bet their button doesn't even do anything. It, like self-destructs. The house just sets on fire. They're like, oops. I don't know. It's a malfunction, man. Piece of this shit. But I think it's a good thing. Because my mom falls. She has like vertigo. She falls all the time. So, I mean, it costs like 80 bucks a month. But I feel good. I feel like, you know, after all the shit that I've done to my parents, I feel like that's like something really nice of me to do. Pay for that. Make, it gives me peace of mind, too. But anyway, for some reason, 
what was it? Oh, legal zoom, right? So for the Paul project, I pay for consulting that I don't use. It's like 40 bucks a month. MailChimp, GoDaddy, all the shit to keep that going, which technically is money that would come out of the budget for that. But anyway, I have to like know exactly. How... Anyway, I, I can't like sometimes I don't know how much is coming out of there. So she gets overdraft fees on her Bank of America account. So the other day she's like, honey, I'm overdrafted 40 bucks. Can you put it in there? I'm like, all right, transfer 40. Babe, you didn't do it soon enough. So they tacked on 35 bucks. I'm like, huh? You got a fucking overdraft here? Are you saying, why don't you get overdraft protection? What the fuck? Babe, just pay the 35. I'm like, okay do it like two hours later she's like babe we're overdrafted by 90 bucks now i'm like what do you mean i just gave you 40 then i give you 35 How, what do you mean we're overdrafted by 90 i don't know babe it's fucking legal zoom came out i'm like so what i have to pay 90 okay pay 90 like 30 minutes babe it's 360 i'm like are you fucking serious for what what? I'm like, call Bank of America right now and tell them to lift the fucking overdraft fees. Because they'll do that. I don't know if you knew this, but when I was married, <laughs> I was overdrafted all the time. And it's not something I have to worry about anymore, but because we don't use that account, it happened recently. Like, it, that, I think that's, it hasn't happened to us very much on that account. But anyway. I learned that Bank of America's protocol, because I used to, I mean, you know, we're all adults here, I used to fuck a girl that was, that worked at a bank, and she told me how it worked, and they will, they will refund your overdraft fees, they like have to, they'll say, nope, the computer won't let me, fuck that, if you stand on it, they'll do it, and every year during the holidays, around Christmas time, they will give you um, I forget what it's called, like, holiday relief or something. And they'll give you all of your overdraft fees for an entire year. They'll clear them all at once. One Christmas, I was strong, they gave me, like, $900. I was like, oh. I was, like, doing the Will Smith cry. You know how he does that? It always makes me cry, too. Hey, that motherfucker, man. Pursuit of happiness, it always makes me cry. All right, anyway. What the point of this whole long thing is... <coughs> okay, let's just get into the story. It's going to be the Shaky Jake Redux, Return of Shaky Jake, whatever you want to call it. God, my neck, dude. What the fuck? That's weird. <laughs> I wonder why I'm having body discomfort. <laughs> I've been totally... In my lane, my entire life, health-wise. <laughs> That's weird. My septum's leaking. Or, like, brain spewing out of my nostrils. <laughs> weird. I don't know, Doc. I don't know. <laughs> cocaine? No, I've never snorted cocaine. It's fucking gross. <sighs> Do I look like a gang member to you? Alright. Oh. All right, so let's get into the story. So, where we left off last time, and I don't want you to think this is like a, I'm not like double dipping on this material. There's just, I don't want to like just jump into new stuff. So, there's going to be some overlap. We've talked about this. You guys don't care. I say this every fucking time, and you're like, dude, just fucking go and tell the story. Timestamp it. Starts at 9 minutes and 11 seconds. If I can remember that. So, where we left off last time, I was just starting to get sick at MDCLA. My, my fucking Pisces Sally had tricked me. My sister, she... And then, as soon as we start kicking, the motherfucker can't speak English anymore. I'm like, that checks out. I start to get... panicky. It's like a very gentle way to say how I felt. I was like screaming underwater.
And that panic was like the onset of the kick. Now, this is the thing. Like I said last time, I was kicking 11 grams of heroin. I was kicking Xanax. I think I was taking six or seven of them a day, bars, which is like ridiculous for me. I've never had a problem with Xanax except for that period because of smoking weed, like I had talked about. And I was on 180 milligrams of methadone. Now, I'll tell, like, old-timers that, you know the old-timers, they're, like, have, like, flannel shirts on, and they're, like, chewing on hay. They're like, yeah, I was on 180 milligrams. And they're like, liar. Drop dead. Like, Holy shit. You guys been on methadone program since the 70s? You know? You know the type. Look like farmers. So there's these farm-looking motherfuckers. You're like, where did these guys come from? They always have flannel, and they're always chewing on hay. They're like eating corn on the cob. You're like, where? Where do these agricultural junkies come from? They're like, shh. Right. It's always a weird atmosphere in those methadone clinic waiting rooms. But anyway, so I was on 180 milligrams of methadone. And remember, we talked about this. when you Back in that time period, this was in 2009. I went in April 1st, 2009. Back in that time period, they would give you methadone for three days. 20, 15, and 10. Now, that's not a lie, but this is the thing. When I went back in 2016, when I had to eat the, my shitty balloons, they didn't give you methadone anymore. They give you a fucking clonidine pack. You know what, a clon you know what clonidine is? Clonidine is a blood pressure medication and they give you one that's like time release they're like careful clonidine pack like the salsa or a dog can you check it out fool you cut the clonidine back into little pieces fool you go fucking suck on it when i butt fuck you fool you get high fool Polara. you know you're always like they would tell me that yeah, you can get high off your clonidine. I'd be like, dude, I don't, um, <laughs> yeah, dog, it's like heroin. You know how there's always the idiot that tries to tell you how the fuck drugs work, but they have no idea what they're talking about? Yeah, I don't know. I think there's acid in it. Um, I don't know, dog. Acid, ecstasy. There's acid and ecstasy in the clonidine pack that the nurse just gave me? Yeah, dog. It's fucking high tech. And you're just like, okay. That was in 2016. I was like, what the fuck is this? What am I going to do with this? And then there's always the dope fiends that are stupid. There's like stupid dope fiends too. Hey, hey dog, I'll buy that from you. I'll give you fucking $10 for that right now, fool. That's on my family, fool. Like you, I sell it because like, who fucking cares about clonidine? What's it going to do? Chill me out a little bit? It doesn't do anything. But at that time, the first time that I was in there, they just gave me 20 milligrams of methadone, 15 and 10. So they had this young nurse. I was telling this story the other day to Karina. We were going for a walk and she's like, what's the worst drug you've ever kicked? I was like, methadone. She's like, tell me about it. I was like, okay. And by the end, she's like, oh. and he treated you like you were an animal. I was like, yeah, well, have you not been paying attention to the fucking hundreds of prison stories I've told? Yeah. So this nurse, I'm starting to panic. I'm in the unit, and remember, I'm going around to Southsiders and trying to be cool, but the only Southsider shit that I know is things that I heard on Sublime albums. Hey, what's up, puppet? No. Nah. Just gonna go wrench on my ride with my hyena. Huh, pero? And like, these dudes would like just straight laugh to my face because I sounded so ridiculous. At one point, I went up to the cop and I didn't know that I couldn't have a shadow. Nobody fucking broke the politics down to me. Maybe they did, but I was just not paying attention. But. I walked up to the cop and I was like, hey man, I don't feel good. He like puts his newspaper down. He's like, how do you feel? 
I'm like, bad. I just said that. And what do you want me to do, man? Are you coming off drugs? I'm like, yeah. He's like, well, I didn't do that to you, did, did I? How the fuck would that be possible? I just met you, and you're a cop. Why would you have gotten me high on drugs? What the fuck are you talking about? I'm going to call the nurse. He's, like, all, like, resentful towards me because I'm trying to make him do his job. I'm like, all right. I'm, like, holding my, the classic junkie fucking, where you, like, hold your stomach as if that's going to be persuasive to them to make them feel like you're sick. It's the junkies, always their play. I'd, like, when I was selling heroin, I'd always have dope fiends be like, yeah, I'm sick, fool. And I'd look at their eyes, and I'd see that they were fucking pin dots. And I'd be like, okay, look. If you don't have big, saucery pupils, you're not dope sick. That's just how it goes. But anyway, so I'm holding my stomach. And the cop's like, Leon? He's like, yeah. He's like, can you not stand there? I'm like, why? Because I don't want you to. I was like, all right. And so I just walked away from him. I remember this very clearly because right after I walked away from this cop, this girl, this, he actually had called the nurse and some girl comes in. She's probably, I don't know, 25, 26 years old. Remember, I'm 23 at the time. And just so you can picture what I look like, imagine me like this, but 50 pounds heavier. I was like this. I was like, hey. I was fucking huge. I looked like a balloon. I looked like a fucking Ryan Leone blimp or something that was just like hanging above a parade or something. It was insane. I was really fat because of the methadone because my fucking metabolism had gone into some sort of constipated paralysis where I didn't shit for like a month at a time. And then when I did shit, I would scream in agony. It was like straight up like Vietnam flashbacks. I'd be like thrashing on the toilet, screaming, having like night terrors, but on the toilet. So I was really fat. And all I ate was like super bad shit. Like I'd eat like fucking, I'd go to McDonald's, get like three Big Macs. And what would happen, it would not metabolize. The food would like just go into my stomach and I just, so I probably, I don't know, I, I, I think at my worst, I was 230. I'm pretty overweight right now. I'm 192. When I'm in, like, good, healthy weight, like, with muscle, I'm 180. That's, like, my healthy weight. I've been 126 is my lowest. But at this point, I was 230, and I just looked, like, I was so fat that it was almost unbelievable that I was, like, kicking drugs because everybody's, like, <sighs> And I don't think that the new white boy, I don't think that that guy really had a habit, dog, because cause he's fucking fat. Gotcha, dog. He's fucking fat, fool. He looks like my baby mama, kind of, to be completely honest with you. So this girl comes, and she's like, I don't know what her role was exactly, but she had juice in the medical, you know, um, medical department at MDCLA. She's wearing like a Hillary Clinton pantsuit and she had a clipboard. And she can't and she's not bad looking, but I was like not in jail enough for long enough for her to be good looking, if you know what I'm talking about. Like just a year later, there were dudes where I was like Damn homeboy, <laughs> you've got some fire ass cheekbones. Some skin, he'll be like, what do you mean? On my face? I'm like, nah. No. Oh, that's what I thought. And he started giggling. Like skinheads always acting like little girls and shit. But anyway, so this chick comes up to me and she's talking to me. Not very good looking, but like I said, I mean, pr for prison standards, she was, what I, she was, like a 10. You always see the, there's like creepy pices, like, 
all of a sudden they're pretending like they're playing cards or something, but they're sitting by themselves. They're just like fanning like a bunch of cards looking at the, at the girl. They look at women like they're meat. And I, I mean, I get it, but I don't know what my point is, but well, it's, they hadn't been around women for a long time is what I'm trying to say. But so she starts talking to me. She's like, hi, I'm Amy. I am the clinical coordinator here at MDC Los Angeles. And I've been notified that you're not feeling well. I'm like holding my stomach and I'm like thinking, I'm like, all right, all right, do the stomach holding thing. I was like, um, oh, hey, Amy. Oh, I'm so happy you're here. I'm really sick. She's like, okay, I brought your file. Let me look. So it says that you're coming off heroin? I was like, Amy, that's one of several things. I'm coming off methadone. She's like, I know, we gave you methadone. No, 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 no. I'm coming off methadone from the street. I was at a clinic. And she's like, well, that's not what your file says. Your file says that you're coming off heroin. And I'm looking at her, I'm like, I'm dealing with a moron. <laughs> that's fucking tight. I'm trying to explain this to her. I'm like, look, I'm coming off methadone. I was at a clinic for three years. She's like, why aren't you holding your stomach anymore? I was like, I am. I like put it back. And I'm coming off 180 milligrams of methadone. Do you know what could happen to me in here? She's like, okay. And she has like some brochure. She's like, okay. According to this brochure, you might experience nausea, diarrhea, cramps. I'm like, Bitch, are you talking, are you, did you really just say I might experience fucking cramps from kicking methadone? It's one of many symptoms. Do you know what a symptom is? I'm like, no, I don't. I'm, <laughs> I'm not 23 years old. I'm, I'm 10. Tell me what a symptom means. She's talking to me like that. And you find that a lot in prison. And this is what's unfortunate about being in that kind of situation a lot of the guys that are in there actually are illiterate. There's some solid ass guys in there. They just never got taught how to read or write. A lot of people in prison, and it's really sad to see, you know, not to get too serious for a second, but you see a lot of people and I hear their stories. You know, I'd like meet black dudes that were like 60 doing life sentences. I'm like, what happened? I got caught with a joint. <laughs> life you know like that's not funny but you know is incredibly disproportionately high prison sentences for like pretty low end crimes and i'd talk to them i'd be like well how is your home life no you know i didn't have no home life see uh my daddy left me when i was six and i never knew my mama I'm like, well, who raised you? What do you mean? I'm like, like, who bought you diapers and food and shit? He's like, oh, I didn't have nothing like that. And I met people that were really like that. They grew up in households without any sort of parental supervisor. It was like Lord of the Flies. But black. It sounds horrible, but you know what I mean. <laughs> um... And I'd feel really bad for him because, like, I'd think about my own life and I'm like, wait a second. A lot of these guys are in here because they had no other choice. What are you going to do when you're raised, you don't have any parents, you don't have any resources, you don't have anybody that's telling you go to, to go to school. And the only thing you can do is go stand on the corner and sell crack rock because that's the only thing that's available. That's the only resource and that's the only thing you know. You don't even know that it's bad. You just know that if you get caught, that you're going to get free housing. It's like how it's pitched to you. Can we get in trouble for this? If, if you get caught, 
you don't have to be cold tonight. They're going to put you in a cell. And you're like, okay. And then they get stuck in this cycle. It's fucked up. And I met a lot of guys. And it's not just black dudes. It's Mexican dudes. It's white dudes. It's poor. Poor is the commonality. It has nothing to do with race. And I chose this life. You know? I grew up, like, taking tennis lessons and shit. Like, Dad, I don't want... This is boring. I fucking hate your stupid tennis. Stupid games. 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 I'm over these games, Father. I didn't have that kind of fucking life, but, you know? I did take tennis lessons. So, this woman is condescending me, and I'm trying to explain to her. I'm like, I'm coming off benzos. She's like... Benzos? Xanax? Pills. There's like a pill section. It's like a choose your own adventure brochure. I'm like, what the fuck? She like put Xanax. She's like, ooh, you might have seizures. You might have this. You might. And I'm just like, Jesus Christ. I'm like, okay, so let me just get something straight. You can't help me. Is that right? No. <laughs> you know, like literally like i'm not joking that's like how these conversations go in, when you're in prison so i'm tripping I'm like fuck she leaves and i end up going um you know i'm like walking around the unit i'm trying to talk to people <laughs> sup Heine? and then someone hey don let me get it you fool hey don't be calling dudes Heine's fool we're dudes. It was like the only word I knew in Spanish, so I'm like calling Mexican gangbangers hyenas. And so finally I go back to my cell. Right when I get there, the guard comes and calls me. Leon, get dressed. I'm like, bail? Medical. So it's kind of scary in federal and state prison when you're in the initial intake process, when you're a new fucking cow that's at the farm you have to go through a series of medical screenings medical psychological dental and it's like a conveyor belt you know they'll come grab like 15 inmates put you in the elevator at mdcla you all have to see and when you're in the elevator it's always super um you know demeaning you're like standing in the corner they're like, don't look forward. You're like, fuck. And at this point, when they took me to medical, I'm past the point of panic, you know, for a second. And that's very common when you're coming off heroin, when you're coming off methadone, you cling on to hope. Well, the nurse is coming to see me. I might be all right. And then you meet her and she acts like you're five. She's like, are you drinking enough fluids? That's their answer to everything. It doesn't matter what happens. You could get stabbed in the fucking eye with a harpoon. And you go to medical and they're like, all right, we're writing you a note for self-care. Drink more water. There you go. You're like, Thanks. What about the harpoon? They're like, oh no. You're going to have to deal with that yourself. I'm like, oh. It's like literally how medical is there. So they end up taking me to this medical um, floor, like I said. I'm like a cattle. And I'm in this waiting room with like 30 other inmates. They probably took like 15 from my floor. And by this point, I'm kicking balls. Like it's starting to kick in. My skin's crawling. My skin feels like it's made out of saran wrap. And remember Indian rug burns? Remember when people would do that to you? Some asshole in school? That's what every inch of your body feels like. Indian rug burns everywhere. You feel that on your balls. It's kind of erotic. You're like, well, that one's okay. But your entire body feels like Indian rug burns. You're getting... These very intense hot and cold flashes. 
where chills feel like they're raining through your body. It feels like pellets of chills are just like coursing through your blood. That's one thing you're dealing with, the runny nose. And then you got fools, you always have germaphobes in, in jail. Hey, damn dog, wipe your fucking nose, for this disrespect for this fuck. Hey, if I get hurt, I'm gonna hurt you, dog. I'm gonna fucking hurt you. I got a shank, fool. I'll fucking stab you in the stomach and take your intestines out. You're like, yeah, so? No. You know, and you're just like, you pretend like you don't hear it because you don't want to be perceived as a bitch, but you know that you just got punked out. So on top of feeling like that, the Indian burn, the uh, indecisive body temperature, you start getting the bubble guts, you know? And what's very interesting, and not to be so graphic with you guys, but... It feels like you're in a perpetual state of swamp ass. At any moment, you can touch your asshole when you're kicking methadone, and you come back, and there's gooey shit on your hand. I'm like, not even joking. Because it gets to a point where it's not like heroin. Like, heroin, you're getting the sketchy farts, where you're praising farts, and you're guessing. You're like, okay. I think it's going to be a silent but deadly, but I think the shitty mist might come out. I'm un it's worth it, fuck. And then it's just like, you shard, right? With methadone, it's happening with such machine gun frequency that it's just anal leakage. There's just constant gooey... Looks like peanut butter, creamy peanut butter that's been sitting in a hot car for fucking three weeks. It's just liquefied and it just sits in this puddle in your pants. And then, and then you know what happens, guys. If you're a real junkie, you know what happens when you sit in your own shit. You start to get rashes on your fucking balls. You already have the Indian burn, Indian rug burn. Now you have a rash on top of it. Yeah, fuck my life. So I'm sitting in this waiting room. Snot's just running down my nose, out of my nose. I've given up on trying to not fart. Because it seems like it's just a leaking faucet. There's like shit coming out at like a completely alarming rate. You're just like, it's, you feel like you're going to just start like getting lifted because there's so much shit in your fucking ass area and the, and you got the rash thing so you start stinking that's the thing and, and remember when you come off heroin when you come off methadone you get an amplified sense of smell so you can smell that shit and the shit smells horrible it smells like outhouse shit it smells like porta potty shit but you're mobile just imagine a portable porta potty scent everywhere you go. There's just this invisible tail of porta potty shit smell. And like, and people will talk shit. They'll be like, "Hey, damn fool, that white boy smells like straight fucking. <laughs> that white boy smells like straight fucking ass, dog. I want to stomp him out, fool. You know, and you're like hearing people say stuff like this. You're like, fuck." So I'm sitting there and all of these things are happening simultaneously. On top of that, you have the mental anguish going on as well. The mental anguish is insane. You know, you're, th you're thinking stuff like this. You're like, okay. I know it's an unhealthy thought, but if I kill myself, I only have to kill myself once right now. And it's in like, and I swear, I know this is dark, but... One of the ways that I was able to deal with, and this is the first few hours of this. This went on for six months. The way that I was able to deal with it, I remember this so clearly, was thinking in my mind that I could kill myself. And it was comforting. I'm like, all right. Wiping saw you're like, okay, if I wanted to, I could kill myself right now. And you're like, oh, it's... And then you won't feel nothing. And you this loops in your mind just to give you comfort. I, I could, I, this could end at any time. I just have to die. 
And that's like a comforting thought when you're in that horrible, nightmarish condition. So I'm sitting there. You start rocking because you're just like, like you're in, like now you're starting to get the muscle aches. Your bones are starting to hurt. That's a big part of kicking methadone is this shit feels like it gets burrowed in your fucking bones. And it feels like the seams just want to burst right open. You get the restless leg syndrome. So you're like sitting there, your legs are shaking. You have snot coming out of your nose and you're rocking back and forth trying to pacify those symptoms. But this is what's fucked up. You've shit your pants already at this point. So when you're rocking, it literally makes farting noises. It's like... <clears throat> and like invisible green stench lines are just like... It's a gas. <laughs> it's just leaking out of you. It's it's so it's insane. So I'm in this waiting room, and all these dudes are just like like he get and everybody was talking at first, and then they say like they see the condition I'm in. I'm like, I'm like you know a couple a couple people are like, uh, hey uh hey dog, hey are you all right fool? Hey stay strong wood, and they all start laughing, and you're like. Yeah, I think I'm going to get some clonidine patches. Oh, good, man. And you're like just rocking back and forth. So finally, you have to go do the physical and it's like some straight up like Indian doctor dude that has like an online degree. And it's like was printed on some cheap laser printer that was like running out of ink. So it's like half of the diploma is like checkered it's just like framed that's the only thing he has on the wall he's like hello how are you doing and i'm like uh he's like well thinking that i might kill myself is the only thing that's making me feel like i can fucking get through this he's like oh so i'm gonna say not good not feeling good have you drinking water i'm like no can you give me anything like a Percocet or anything? Oh, no, no, I don't give Percocets, no. Um, do you have any cravings? I'm like, dude, there's very little in life. You could think of the most disgusting scenario. I would beer bong come right now for drugs. No, I'd, so should I say it's at the 10? Yeah. Okay. And that was your exercise. I'm like, are you fucking my exercise? And I was like, I rock back and forth and it contributes to the rash that's spreading on my ball sack. No. He just writes no exercise. Anyway, so... He doesn't do anything for me. Then I have to go to dental, right? Dental was the first time that they actually smelled me. Like, the Indian doctor didn't even smell me. He was, like, eating a cup of noodles the whole time. He was completely oblivious. When I went to go get the dental thing, they sit you down. It looks like, you know, dental chair at a dental office where you're kind of, like, lounged back. And they're, like, look, you know, they're asking me if I have any cavities by this point, tears are coming out of my eyes. Like, I'm I'm literally crying. I, I feel like I'm getting tortured. I feel like I'm in fucking hostel or something. I'm, like, spread out on the dental chair. And the dentist was like... Another Indian guy. He's like, um... Uh, sir. You do not smell good. I'm like, thanks, dentist. Jesus Christ, like, what the fuck does that have to do with anything? He's like, well, if I'm going to be honest, you smell like shit. Can I go now? Yes. I hope you could cover these shits, stink. And I just ended up leaving. I don't remember what he said to me, but he definitely, like, mentioned the smell. I remember that, because it was super embarrassing. Like, I had to, like walk back and when I went back into the um when I went back into the 
into the waiting room, they're all talking again. And as soon as I walk in there, they all shut up. Shh, here he comes, here he comes. Now, remember what I look like at this point. Snot's coming out of my nose. I'm fucking fat. I'm like, and I like, I don't have this sleeve. I just have this like, I just have like the jaws. Rawr. That's it. I just look like some fat, like, I don't even know what I look I like. A, I look like a ska fan or something. I listen to ska and drink beer out of red cake cups, you know? And so I'm sitting in this waiting room and they start fucking with me. Uh, hey dog, are you in here for a financial crime? For fucking stockbroking? <laughs> and they're all like laughing. It was like the Hispanic version of Beavis and Butthead, but there was like 40 of them. I'm like, I was like, I was like, no, I'm here for selling Chiva. Oh, Chiva. And they're just all fucking with me, right? And I remember like putting my head in my lap and I just start, I break down. Like, you know, these guys are making fun of me. I have shit in my ass. And I just start crying. Like, I remember just wanting to be with my parents so bad, like, feeling the totality of, like, what was going on, thinking about my attorney telling me I was about to do 10, you know, thinking about Jenny telling me that some dude named David just tried to rape her, I wish I could tell you guys the rest of that, too, that's a badass, what, what we did to him, but I got in trouble for that, but anyway, um, and then I'm going through the worst withdrawal of my life, now, I did not know that it had not even started yet. It didn't even start. Like, it got so, so much worse than than this. But I'm crying. And of course, this incites more verbal abuse. I feel like a bitch describing it that way, but that's what was going, oh, ooh, ooh, fucking my blame is his, his parent. I'm like, I just want, I just want to be Sad again. Or whatever I'm saying. I'm like saying my dead dog's name. I'm like, Bogey, I miss you. I just sounded like such a bitch. Like, I never got raped in prison. But if it was going to go down, it would have been right then. I was in full-blown bitch babble mode. Like, all right. Anyway, the cop ends up coming to get us. I've shit my pants now. I'm not joking. That really happened. I have to get in the elevator. Cops are like, God damn, huh. who busted ass? And I think the white boy shit his pants, fool. I mean, of course, I'm the only white guy. They look at me and they're like, lame. Make us look bad, man. Some white power guard. I'm like, Jesus Christ. That's And there's a lot of racist ass guards in there, you know? They, and they, like, hate you if you're white because you're, like, making white people look bad. It's like, you're making people look bad, motherfucker. So we end up getting back to the unit. I'm, like, barely walk at this time. And I'm, like, walking up to the cell and Cash comes up to me. He's like, hey, what's up, man? I'm just like... He's like, damn... You don't look good. You get dental work done or something? And I was just like, I was like, dude, I'm kicking so hard. He's like, huh? I, like, I didn't even have the energy to say it out loud. And I like, grabbed him by the shirt. I was like, I'm kicking balls. He's like, really? You smell horrible, bro. He's like, why don't you take a hot shower? You smell like straight up shit. And I just like was like, damn, hot shot. That sounds so bomb right now. Because when you're kicking, two things help you: masturbating and hot showers. And you can do both at once. So I didn't even like know how to do that. And he's like, he's like showing me. I end up just taking all of my clothes because this is when you're in MDCLA or when you're in any 
part of the feds, you can't walk around with shower shoes on. You automatically get beat up or stabbed. It's like a politic. So he had to give me like another pair of shoes that I could wear, like these like Velcro shoes. Um, and then I walked to the shower and I had to take, I had to go in the shower. So it was like these, these single stalls with like a door that opened like this. And you could, it was like kind of like a, a translucent, almost like a glass door, but you could throw your, you could throw like your Fed outfit over it and it would make it opaque so that you could shower. Now I had to take off my pants. You know, you're wearing like these green, like scrub pants. I took off my white shirt and I remember being in that shower naked and just being so cold. I was like, Oh, there was no water on yet. I took off my pants and goopy shit. Just, pfft. it made like the sound of a bird shitting. It was just this plop, like a piece of shit fell out of my ass. I was like, oh. but now I'm naked. Take my socks off, put it over there. And I go to, like, I'm like shaking. I go to grab the, the nozzle. Now, you know how, like, when you're not used to a shower, you don't know, like, where to turn it to get the correct heat. I did that. And it turns on and it's ice cold and it hits me. And I know this sounds weird, but that cold water hitting me felt like I got punched. Like my body temperature was so cold already. It almost felt like I was getting plunged into like hypothermia. Like I was just like, it took the wind out of me. I was like, <gasps> and I like fell and I'm like, frantically trying to get up but I can't even move because like that cold temperature seemed to like paralyze me almost like I, I couldn't move and I'm like and, and again I'm crying again and I'm just like and I'm so sad I'm so sad that I'm in this condition and like I'm so scared and I don't know what to do and I like don't understand what's going on and I end up just like forcing myself to stand up I like turn it and it gets lukewarm, never gets hot. And I'm just like, dude, fuck it. And I just kind of lay there. You know, you got to imagine the amount of dudes that come in that shower. I had my head on the drain. There's like probably just come puddling up and like being all over my face. And I was just like, I didn't even care. I felt so sick. I didn't even, I would have licked that fucking floor for a fix, you know? Seriously. I don't know how long I was in there, but I was in there for a long ass time. Like where my like fingers were pruny. And I remember like trying to beat off. And when I touched my dick, it, you know how that feeling, if you're a man, when you get kicked in the balls and it like really hurts, like in your stomach. Just touching my dick felt like I was kicking my balls, but I just started like, I started beating off with two fingers anyway. I was like, and as soon as I, and like, I felt better for, in, for like the five or six seconds that I was beating off. As soon as I came, it was like fireworks of withdrawal, just, I was like, and I like fell right back on the drain. I felt like I just got knocked out in a fist fight or something right after I came. It was a very odd feeling. Like you, you generally don't associate coming with like death like that, but it just felt like death just leaked out of my dick or something. It was fucking disgusting. Finally, like there was not even lukewarm water anymore and it was just cold and I was like shivering. I was like, ah, uh, and I like forced myself to turn the shower off. I weakly pulled myself up. I'm putting clothes, I'm not even drying off. I'm just putting clothes like on my wet body and I'm just soaked. Put my shoes on. I just look ridiculous. I'm like, I look like an extra from the thriller video. I'm like walking back to my cell like this. I look like a zombie, you know? <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>
And Cash looks at me and he's just like, he's like, dude, what the fuck is wrong with you, man? I'm like, and I just make it back into the cell and I just collapse. Like now at this point is really when the warm part of kicking kicked in for the first time. And that didn't leave me for months. And uh, that's probably one of the hardest parts about kicking methadone is you start getting this really warm, hot flashes that just like make you like, it feels like a hair dryer is inside of your skin somehow, like blowing hot air at your skin but it doesn't feel good. Like it makes sweat come out of your temples. And I was getting these like weird ass hot flashes. It felt like a blow dryer. And I was laying in the middle of the cell, you know, like on the floor. And my celly was sitting on the, he was on the bed, curled up in the fetal position. And he was just saying shit to himself in Spanish. He was kicking heroin, you know? I looked at him. I was like, no bueno. He's like, no bueno. I was like, Cash comes in. He has an acoustic guitar. He's like, what up? What up, shaky Jake? It was like the first time I'd heard that term. And he ends up getting the acoustic guitar and he starts like singing. And I'm, I'm laying, like I just took a swan dive off the bunk bed or something. Like I have like my hands extended up. And he's singing to me and he's like, track marks and color tattoos what do your parents think of you i remember i swear to god that's a line that he had said when he was singing to me shaky jake shit and i'm like dude please leave <laughs> you know and he's like he's like all right all right he's like damn dude you look sick he's like hey i got some sh i can probably help you please. And like my eyes were rolling back into my head. Now at this point, I'm getting the really hot flashes. And what had happened is those hot flashes brought nausea with it. So I started getting really nauseous. And that's right when I started throwing up. I had just gotten out of the shower. Cash had come in there and called me shaky Jake for the first time. He sang to me. My celly was crying. And I'm getting these hot flashes. And that's what made me nauseous because it was such a interesting sensation so i have like the restless legs so i'm kind of like shaking and the nausea creeps up and i went up to the toilet i kind of like crawled on my elbows and got to the toilet this metallic toilet rim and i'm like Bleh. and i puke but there's urine in the toilet that my fucking dirt bag Pisces celly didn't flush so as soon as the vomit comes out of my mouth piss like sprays back up and like goes into my nostril I'm like <sighs> and I can like feel your I'm getting like a drip of Pisces piss and I'm like oh and I that set me over I, I could not stop puking after that and I swear, like, if you taste another man's piss in your nostril, it's the only fucking flavor that you can ever taste again, it feels like. Like, it didn't matter how much acidic bile I puked up into that toilet. All I could taste was the fucking Pisces piss, you know? Finally, I puked to the point where it's just acidic bile. It's starting to burn the back of my throat singeing my nostrils it feels like flames had gone out of my nose because like i literally like tried to stop puking and i put my hand over my mouth and then it singed my nose because this acidic bile spewed out like walrus tusks again i start thinking i'm like all right uh, if it gets too bad i could kill myself i'm all happy i'm like snapping I look up at my, my bunk and I'm like, all right, I got 
I get up there and just curl up. And I so I like go up there and it takes a lot of effort, you know, to get up to that bunk. You have to stand up on this like desk. You have to kind of like hop up. And I was like shaking and I was so weak. It felt like my bones were made out of like, you know, those like rubber pencils that bend. Everything just felt all bendy and like that's even really before I think the like the bone twitching is like the only way that I could really describe it. This like weird reverberation that goes on in the <laughs> in the bones, which is super gnarly. Like I'm probably downplaying the bone stuff, but it, it sucks. It feels like it's coming out of your it feels like your like your kneecap at a certain point feels like it's tri like some sort of like I don't even know how to describe it, like a fucking seashell that like, like that's what your kneecap feels like. It feels like it just opens. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> like, it's really bad. You can like feel like calcium depletion occurring. So once I get up to the top bunk, I'm like laying up there and then the cop comes and locks the door. It's like lockdown now. Or I mean, it's like time for the day to be over. It's like lights out. I'm just like, oh, I was like, whoa, what? Uh, and I'm like talking to my celly. I'm like, hey, man. I don't feel good, bro. I'm fucked up. I'm looking at him and he's like, pretty much just like saying some sort of like Mexican prayer over and over again. He's sitting there shaking and it's freaking me the fuck out. I have to puke again. So I end up taking my mattress off the top bunk. Put it by the toilet because I have to be by the toilet. I have to fucking be by the toilet because I'm throwing up so often. But there's not even puke coming out. Now it's just dry heaves and like some spittle will be like. And I'm laying on the mattress on the floor. I don't realize because I'm not used to prison and I'd never been locked up in prison like that. I didn't know that they were going to do a stand up count right then. So I'm like laying on my mattress on the floor and all of a sudden a flashlight comes in he's like hey stand up the hell are you doing and i'm just i try to get up and again very common thing when i was kicking is i would make this zombie fucking look i'd be like he'd be like what the fuck's wrong with you man fucking weird ass dude and he just kept going and I, like, collapsed back onto the mattress. So this goes on for, like, who knows, you know? Each minute when you're kicking methadone feels like a fucking hour. And my celly is, like, trying to get off his mattress to come puke. But I'm just, like, laying in the middle of the cell. So he just throws up right at the end of his bunk. And we, and that the smell of his vomit just starts permeating the entire cell. Like, it's like that super, super rank, like, the kind of vomit that just, I don't know, smells like county fair puke, you know? Super stale, super, like, super potent. Just smell rancid as fuck. So he's like trying to get off the bunk. I'm trying to get off the floor. This goes on for God knows how long, you know? And I'm just laying there in a ball, shaking, violently shaking, tears streaming down my eyes. I cried so much that first night of kicking, like when I like actually felt what methadone felt like. Because, you know, everybody knows that heroin the kicking heroin's bad. You'll hear that, you know, like everybody talks about it. It's like, yeah, that guy was kicking heroin. Heroin withdrawal. Heroin addicts have withdrawal. You know, but people rarely talk about methadone withdrawal. And I'm telling you, if I could quantify it by a number, I'd say it's at least a thousand times worse. There's nothing that even compares, you know, suboxone withdrawal, maybe like in its peak that lasts for like six or seven hours of just hardcore kicking during the 10 days that you come off Suboxone. It feels like that for months. The hellacious part of Suboxone. It feels like that for months with methadone. So anyway, 
the hallucinations start pretty quickly that first night. I don't know how long it took, but I remember laying on the floor, on the mattress. I was so sick. I couldn't even cry anymore, and I'm just shaking. And I end up looking up at the ceiling, and I see clouds forming, like, on the top of the ceiling of the cell, and I'm like, uh, I'm like wiping snot. I'm like, huh? clouds. I'm like, Paisa. And he just looks at me, he like turns over. He's sick as fuck himself. He was already kicking when I got there, and I just started getting this dude well. So he's just hating life. It's like he's had a start over now. And I'm looking up at the ceiling, and I'm seeing these clouds, and they're just brewing, they're bubbling looks like angry clouds up at the top of the cell and I don't realize that I'm hallucinating it's from the Xanax or it might be from the dehydration it might be a combination but it's probably from the benzo withdrawal because benzo withdrawal makes you hallucinate and then I start seeing lightning <sighs> crackles of lightning and it's like brilliant blue and purple colors and I'm just like the hallucinations, like, it occurs to me that it's not possible, and I'm like, oh, hallucination. Oh. I'm fucked up. I felt like my, like, face didn't work anymore. Oh. Oh. And I got very scared. I'd say that fear and that was like probably like the main thing. I got really scared because the intensity that I was feeling was unmatched. I'd kicked heroin before and kicking heroin's no punk. That sucks. It is not even in the same ballpark. It's it's a thousand times worse, like I said. And feeling it, feeling like the heaviness of it, feeling like how loud the withdrawal was, like just how fucking downright violent it was it was thrashing like a fucking sea fucking stingray or something I'm like, ah. i don't do stingrays thrash i don't know i was thrashing though like, like flopping on the floor i had no puke left there's no vomit that could even come out of me it was like it had dried up and now the diarrhea starts i'm like fuck I'm sitting on the toilet and it's just like, like every calorie excess that I've had, that I had in like the last like two years on the methadone program was just like violently thundering out of my fucking asshole in some sort of like shitty sneeze type way. Like just a propulsion of misty shit. I was shitting so violently like with so much fucking velocity and it stunk so bad that it makes me puke which is interesting because now your shit is like spraying out of your ass while you're puking at the same time looks like some gymnastic shit you're like, oh, it's like making like a full circle of body excrement it's so fucking hardcore like i could describe it through and through every little detail and you just would you couldn't know unless you've done it like how fucking severe it is it is so bad and it got to a point where like i thought i might die you know i'm hallucinating i'm shitting and i'm puking at the same time and i remember thinking like i don't think i'm gonna make it you know i think i'm gonna die and like it's not gonna just be like the kind of dying that I wanted with the suicide this was gonna be not like like I was gonna like shit to myself to death I was gonna like shit out some like spiked bat or something I don't know. so I got scared and I end up going to the door of the cell and I'm like bah, 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 bah. help me bah, bah, bah. help me and like you're hearing people like hey shut the fuck up man I'm trying to sleep 
bop, bop, oh, and I'm looking at the cop and he's at his, he's at his desk. You, you could hear a pin drop in a place like this because you got serious people, serious killers there. It's, it's all level security. So you're with hardcore lifers that are just catching murder cases that are like about to do life sentences and they're mad and they'll kill you. They don't give a fuck. Paisa, I don't know, I think he, like, I've been telling him how bad I felt, he saw me do the thing where I was shitting and puking at the same time, he saw me crying, he starts singing to me in Spanish, like, trying to serenade me with, like, some Mexican love song, he's like, ooh la do la la, ooh la la, j ba do ba da, Ba la la, or whatever the fuck he was saying. Na na nu na na. And it just contributed to the weirdness of the situation. Like, it didn't help. I was just, and I'm looking at this fucking weirdo, and I'm just like, dude, shut up. Can you not do that, please? Go back to my door. Ba ba ba. Finally, the cop comes. He's like, dude, what? You're waking up everybody. What's up? It better be good. I'm like, dude. It's like, I can't hear you. Come up to the door. I think I'm going to die. You got to help me. And I'm like using some voice that I don't even recognize. I sound like some fucking drunk astronaut or something. He's like, what's wrong? I'm like, I'm kicking nothing, man. <laughs> you know, it's like, I don't even sound like myself. I sound like some like really weird version of me. He's like, so? What? I can't do anything for you. I'm like, so medical. So he decides to call medical. And you guys know what happens. So I'm like, dude, I'm dying, dying at this point. Oh, and I'm really starting to like, I'm making like crocodile noises and shit. Like it was really bad. My Sally's just so freaked out. He's probably like, he doesn't know all these fucking life people are weird as fuck. Probably he's telling his pies to friends at breakfast, you know? Like, no, he was kicking bad too. Finally, the nurse comes up there. It's like this whole like crew of people. It's like, not the lady that was patronizing me before, but couple nurses, some RN, whatever. How you doing? And it's like some bitter ass bitch, you know? You know those people that look like, kind of like catfishes, but they're people? That's how she looked. Or crawfish. Or what are they called? Uh, I think they are catfishes. They have like whiskers. This lady that looks like this, I know you know the type. What's going on? Coming off drugs? Are you in a gang? Are I have you ever had sex? Huh? I'm just I'm trying to picture a fucking weird ass looking bitch. No, I didn't say anything. Like she's just asking me what's up with me. I'm telling her what's wrong. She's like, What are you coming off of? What are you coming off of? I'm like, methadone. Heroin, Xanax. There's not much we can do for you. She's like, look, I'll try to get something for you. I'm like, please, please get something for me. You know, I'm talking like that again. So she leaves. She comes back, maybe like 15, 20 minutes later, knock on the door, da, 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 da. I'm like, oh my God. I start, like, kind of, some normality, like, comes back to me because, like, I think that I'm going to get well. I think she's getting me a painkiller. The meal slot opens where they would put trays if you're on lockdown. She's like, hey, I pulled a lot of strings, 
but I was able to get you something. Put your hand out. I'm like, I'm like so stoked right now. I'm like, oh, and she puts this white pill in my hand. And I'm like, oh. My God, I hope it's like a Norco or a fucking Darvacet or something. <laughs> and I look at it and I see the, the fucking IV. I'm like, by the way, I knew, I knew what it was. She's like, it's an ibuprofen, 800, the strong kind. I had to pull some serious strings to get that for you. Are you serious right now? An 800 milligram ibuprofen? She's like, it's all I can get. The doctor's not here, hon. I'm like, I just like eat it. <laughs> Rabid dope fiend. It was horrible. Oh my God. And the rest of that night, I remember praying pretty much like praying to god that it would end you know like somehow i'd be able to survive it and i missed my mom and dad so much and i just wanted and i missed jenny and i just wanted to be home so bad this is the worst i had ever felt in my entire life sad you know physically emotionally mentally spiritually i was just straight up bankrupt you know and it sucked i was feeling it i was about to get an overdraft fee and uh, we will continue in the next installment of the Shaky, Di Shaky Jake Redux or the Return of Shaky Jake. Kind of revisiting some of the old material, but there'll definitely be new stuff as well. I appreciate for those of you that um, are supporting me and are down with everything and you guys are the best. I'm tired. I'm like delirious at this point. I have a huge day tomorrow. Thank you all. Palabra.